Hey guys, it's been a while since I did any sort of an update, and I, you know, I just found that I picked up one thing here, one thing there, nothing, you know, nothing major, no major criterion uh, pickups or anything. Uh, but I did pick up a couple things that I thought were interesting. I, I some of them I can't remember if I ever showed before. I know I showed them in like a hangout, but that's not on my channel. It was on somebody else's channel that I that I did the hangout with, and I can't remember whose it was anymore. It could have been one of a few different ones. Uh, so. I thought I'd just show you what I got. If if I showed it before, if you've seen it before, you know, fast forward or whatever you got to do. Um, but I'm going to start with a, a, an item that I picked up. Uh, it was a rare item, and in that there were only 30 of them made. And this is a porcelain uh, wall or mag wall mount or magnet mount. Comes in a box like this. I was, uh, it took a while. And so the, um, the, the guy who made it actually autographed it for me, which he says he never does, which I was pleased with. And he also refunded me the shipping, which I thought was nice because it took so darn long. Uh, it's one of my favorite horror characters. It, uh, I generally hate, um, it, in real life, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this type of, of, of a thing. Um, but I loved it in the movie. Uh, I don't know why I never liked it. When I was even when I was a little kid, I never I never cared for clowns, uh, but this is a, a special clown from a special movie that I really enjoy uh, from a Stephen King novel that I've that I've loved for years, and that is uh, Pennywise the clown. And I'm holding it like this so you can see that it is actually this is a 3D type thing or 2D anyway I guess well 3D I suppose um, yeah you can see it's got depth to it. These are lines. It's 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 raised up here it's really cool looking the the detail on this is sort of amazing i think uh that he put in this and the hair is is this you know poofy stuff here then on the back uh, you can hang it with magnets on the fridge or i'm going to hang it on the wall so he put a he screwed a wall thing in here for me so i can hang it right on the wall so it will hang on probably above my light switch here to my right um maybe left on your screen, but um, yeah, I think it's really cool looking. It gives you an idea how big it is. I got a pretty big head, so <laughs> see how big it is compared to my fairly large hand, too. Uh, but it's it's nice size. I would say it's probably, uh, I don't know, four inches or so in uh, in uh, height and uh, maybe two inches wide at the face part. And then maybe, it's, I think it's maybe five inches uh, wide kind of in the hair as well. The teeth are really, really detailed, though. You can actually feel the teeth in there. Obviously, the nose is puffed up. The eyes are inset a little bit. Really, I thought he did a great job. And then he signed it on the back here. Um, right here. This is his, sign his signature. I thought he did a great job. It was limited to 30. I got it off of a website. Um, some other YouTuber showcased it on his channel. And said, you know, he got in on it before they sold out. So as soon as I saw, I even watched, finished watching the video, I just went to the website right away and got in on it. I think I might have gotten the last one or the next to the last one. It, these aren't numbered, um, but I'm pretty sure this was the last one because he said I, it, I mine was the last order to go out. So even either I got the last one or certainly the last batch, and I'm I'm okay with that. The fact that it was one of the last ones is fine. I'm gonna put that back in the box so I'm ready to hang it. I just thought, you know, you guys might want to see that, especially you people that are horror fans, and there's quite a few of them out there. Or just if you like the movie It, you know, the movie It is, is I, I like it a lot. So anyway, that was that. I don't believe I showed that on my channel before. Next, I picked up some CDs, which I don't often buy CDs, but something happened this week, and uh, or last week and a half, two weeks, and, and just seemed like either bargains came my way, or I just felt compelled to buy the CD. I'm going to put them on my iPad. Um, through um, I, I participated through I um, this is called the iCloud Music thing, something or other, which is nice because any of the devices I have that uh, share my name, which are quite a few, some of the kids are all on my accounts. I have an uh, Apple TV, uh, which counts, <clears throat> and my iPad, my iPod, <coughs> all of those have access to the cloud music. So. It resides in the cloud. It's my whole music library. Anything I upload uh, via like a disc like this goes on there, and it's pretty cool. So the first thing I'm going to show you is one that I happen to be at a um, autumn something or other autumn fest, I guess they called it, and they performing there was a young lady by the name of Sherry Mullen, 
and she does some covers and some of her own stuff. And I really enjoyed her music. It's kind of bluesy, uh, rock, blues, a little bit of jazz, a uh, little bit of folk. Really liked it. She's an acoustic guitar. She had an electric guitar player with her and a bass player. No drummer. Anyway, she mentioned uh, that she had albums, CDs for sale. And I enjoyed, I sat there and watched it for about an hour while my, the rest of my family was off doing whatever they were doing. Um, I did spend time with them too, but uh, I spent about an hour and a half with them walking around. And then they had to, I think they were going into the church. There was a church on the premises. They were going to go in there and I already seen it. So I didn't feel the need to go back in. Anyway. The the, the uh, disc she talked about was uh, Strange Symmetry. And she talked about her and her then 15-year-old son who had, who had been having a lot of troubles. They uh, He ran away from home. He was into drugs and so on. And she prayed and hoped that he would come back. He finally did. And they found each other again through music. And so this music, SM Squared, is Sherry Mullen and Sean, I believe his name is Mullen, uh, the two of them are SM squared, and they made this uh, strange symmetry. And there's mom and son. All the songs were written by them. And I really liked it, so I picked it up. Uh, there's a lyric sheet and uh, another look at the two of them, which I just, I just, to me, it was a very heartwarming story how music kind of brought them together. And it just shows you that music can do that, how powerful it can be. And she was a cutie. She, she really did a great job. And I was very impressed with her and her. Just how she worked the crowd, and it's good. Small little, you know, small little venue, probably hundred people watching her, and she did great. And that was that one. And that's one that probably no one would know, and unless you like the kinds of music I described, uh, more folk and and uh, blues than rock or jazz. It was at Best Buy, and I saw the deluxe version of this, and I saw Amazon had it for like thirty five dollars, and then I found this digital book, and they had it on sale for twelve. Or 13, 13, I guess, at uh, Best Buy. It, the cover feels like um, uh, the uh, first Planet of the Apes, um, the newer version. That, that, I don't know what that feel is. It's a funky feel. It, it's almost like your hand slides across it. It's, it's odd. Love the cover on this. Uh, I've listened to it. It sounds, to my mind, fantastic. And it is uh, David Gilmore of Pink Floyd. This is called... Uh, Rattle That Lock. Basically what this is, is a 10-song uh, uh, day in the life of, or maybe it's a week in the life of, a middle-aged man. He talks about his mother passing away. He talks about uh, uh, love and life. And, and I love the cover on this. It's a birdcage, obviously, and a bunch of different birds flying out, starlings, and well, maybe they're crows. I don't know what they are. I really love it, though, the wheat field. Uh, so it looks in a, the, the dark, threatening clouds. We really like the look of that. And the back, we get a look at the. Uh, he's like uh, he's got to be seventy years old, sixty nine years old, something like that. Still, uh, you know, still plays well. He and his wife wrote the uh, music and lyrics to everything in here. There's a couple instrumentals. Um, his wife is Polly Sampson, and there is. David Gilmore and his wife on the inside. I really liked how they did this. There's there's a, a booklet in the inside, like it is a digital book. All the lyrics are here to all the different songs, along with some photos. Really well done. Gold uh, gold on the spine, if you can make that out. Yeah. I really like this a lot. I listened to it um, while driving to work, and I've also listened to it at night uh, going to bed. It's very relaxing. Uh, Pink Floyd. It's Pink Floyd. I, I, I'm convinced that David Gilmour's guitar is what makes Pink Floyd Pink Floyd. That and probably of the late uh, Richard White's keyboards, because the drums are eh, fairly generic. And even, and even though I like Roger Waters and his bass, it's it's not anything like John Entwistle's bass from the Who or 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 even Paul McCartney's bass from from the Beatles. It, it's not that melodic. <clears throat> he does drive a few songs like Money. And that's not a hard thing to play though. Uh, not that I can, but uh, anybody who can play the bass can probably play money. It's not that difficult. It's just very distinctive. And I will give Roger Waters credit for writing some great music and for doing some great vocals. But David Gilmore's, you know, a lot of Pink Floyd is David Gilmore. I'm convinced of that. Anyway, uh, sounds a lot like Pink Floyd. So if you like Pink Floyd, you probably like Rattle That Lock. 
still trying to get familiar with that. I want to say Rattle Them Bones, but it's not. Rattle That Lock from David Gilmour. And I'll hold off on the last music thing I got. I'm going to go instead to some DVDs. I picked up this four-movie uh, Horror Unleashed collection. Just some stuff that I either had owned prior on VHS, but not on DVD or Blu-ray, or I liked the movie and just uh, couldn't pick it up. I've watched all four of these. Uh, so for those people who say, you know, you get all these movies, you don't watch them, I watch most of them. So get off my fucking back, will you? Um, and for those of you who, who don't say that, we're good. Um, but the four movies were The Blob, Christine, Fright Night, and The Seventh Sign. I like all four of these movies. Uh, even The Seventh Sign, which is probably the lowest rated of the, rated of the four, I liked it. Uh, Fright Night, of course, is, is you know, to me, it's, it's just a funny... Uh, and yet, not totally funny movie, but it's got some humor in it. Uh, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's intentional necessarily, necessarily. But uh, I, I found it to be a, a good movie. The Blob I liked a lot, and Christine's one of my favorite uh, Stephen King's ad Stephen King adaptations. So I really like Christine. No extras on this. Comes in two discs like this, so you get two movies on one and two movies on the other. I had to order it twice. I ordered the first one. I ordered the Blob skipped. Uh, so I had to order another one from Amazon. I've got, got to send that one back. But that rarely happens. And I was this one, I played all four movies uh, in two nights. I watched two movies one night and two movies the next night. So really enjoyed it. It was over the weekend I watched them. So, uh, yeah, decent quality. I mean, it's DVD quality. You're not going to see Blu-ray quality on these. But not bad DVD quality, I didn't think. I thought they were, I thought they looked halfway decent. So pleased to pick that up for under $10. Four movies couldn't beat it. Next are two from Arrow. Uh, I got uh, the Arrow version, which I thought was better than the uh, Screen Factory. But you know what? Who knows? I mean, you could you could make a case either way, I guess. For uh, Life Force, love the cover on this. Did watch it already. I hadn't seen it before, and I watched it, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a Toby Hooper film. You know, he made a couple films. He made this one, and he made the uh, Mars. At, uh, yeah. Yeah, I own it too. Um, I can't even name of it off the top of my head, but it's the one where the uh, little boy uh, sees the Martians land and his parents get taken over and, and everybody gets taken over and then he has to uh, fight along with some military dudes. The uh, These really overly large, uh, almost Muppet-like uh, aliens that come from Mars that are looking to take over the world. But um, And why I can't think of it. Adventure, oh, darn it. Invaders from Mars. That's it. Invaders from Mars. Anyway, Toby Hooper directed that one and Life Force. These are the two that were kind of... This is vampires, more or less. It's not the bite you on the neck vampire. It's the suck the life force from you, hence the title. Uh, but a vampire-like being. Um, beautiful Matilda uh, May in this. Uh, just a gorgeous girl uh, who is uh, naked for just about the whole movie. But... Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, really enjoyable. Uh, I don't want to give a lot of a lot of things away about it, but a ton of extras on this. I guess most people have probably seen it. I don't know. I guess uh, people always say that in their videos, but they're talking to other horror people. I know my channel has a mix. I'm just fixing this room while I sit here. My channel has a mix of people. Not everybody's a diehard horror fan, probably, on my channel. You've got people like Criterion Movies, classic, more classic movies, and I, I appreciate that, but... My tastes are varied. I mean, I like everything from horror to uh, to dramas to even romance, depending on what it is. I, I like Gone with the Wind and some other things. I watch things with my wife, and so I have a wide taste in things, maybe wider than some. I don't know. Um, I've been around for a while, uh, perhaps longer than some of the, well, definitely longer than some of the twenty and thirty year olds around here. So uh, perhaps my tastes are varied just because I've uh, you know been exposed to more stuff over the years. Uh, and they will be exposed to more. Um, but anyway, I liked Life Force a lot. I thought it was really well done. And I would recommend this version if if you want to get one. This comes with the uh, Blu-ray and uh, and, some, and a disc two is the, the theatrical version and then the uh, the international version. So you get two different versions. And it's, it's got the reversible uh, slip on it and a quite a good size thick book here. That, uh, I don't know. I don't really want to show the pictures because I think there might be some possible nudity in this. But uh, 
and then a, uh, and then one of the film. I really want to get this film. Uh, when I was a kid, this was a big deal. Mark of the Devil. So I want to get that one. It came with this. They all these arrows come with a some sort of a postcard type thing, and these on the back. So a lot of extras. Uh, to me, very 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 cool movie. Love the look of the booklet from the inside here. You see how that see how it kind of like how that kind of continues there. Anyway, Life Force. And this one I might have shown before. I can't remember. I'll be brief with this one. Mario Bava's uh, Baron Blood, which oddly stars Joseph Cotton, who was in The Third Man and a lot of other movies uh, over the years. He, he, is this, he stars as Baron Blood. He is a uh, old Baron uh, who uh, is reincarnated, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, he's inadvertently revived when an ancient incarnation is read out as a joke by a descendant and his girlfriend. Now, you know, how often does that happen? I just saw Buffy the Vampire episode where that happened. Moloch was in the computer because uh, 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 Willow scanned him in. Anyway, I watched that last night. Uh, I have not watched Bear and Blood yet, so there's one for those of you who say you don't watch everything. Um, I haven't watched it yet, and I've never seen it before, so that was the beauty of this purchase. But uh, I'll look forward to watching this one. Again, you've got uh, reversible cover art. You've got Blu-ray. This one has a DVD also with it. Life Force does not. So this has got three discs with it. These were on sale for like 10 bucks uh, through Zabby, so I picked those up. Next, for, for like $8, I had to pick this up. Of course, I own the um, Halloween 10 disc set, not the 15 disc set. I had to go out and get the, uh, yeah, the unrated producer's cut that just came out for seven ninety eight or whatever it was. Blu-ray and digital HD. I've already taken the code for the digital HD, uh, but I wanted the Blu-ray. I'm going to add it to my set. I ordered, we'll see how this works out. I ordered a couple cases at each hole six, just so they're, they're the same size and everything. I'm going to substitute that for my Halloween, so I'll actually put this in in the set and just leave this case probably empty. I, I like this case, but um, I like the idea of having them all together, too, and it's not that special of a case, so I'll just put it to the side. Anyway, the Unrated Producers Cut, which I've never seen, so I've seen the regular cut. This will be interesting. I know it's got a lot of different plot points and it, it, a different story, really, so I'll look forward to that. Uh, let's see. Next I'll show that one CD thing that I said I was going to get to. I bought this used. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this artist, so, and if you were to look around this room, you'd, you'd see why, um, you know, certain artists kind of speak to you, I guess, right? This thing is annoying the heck out of me. Why does it keep falling out of here? What is it? Oh, that just keeps that nice. Okay, I see. Sorry. Sorry for the distraction. I can always edit this out if I choose to. So I'll just leave it in. It's just more free rambling that way. Uh, big fan of this artist. And this box set had come out it's like last year sometime, I think. Uh, late last year. Pre-Christmas, I believe, for like 100 bucks, And there's no way I was paying that. But this, I got this uh, through FYE through the mail. I had like a 40% off coupon code type thing. And it was priced pretty nicely. So I, it wasn't much at all compared to the $100 that it goes for new. And that is uh, the Bruce Springsteen box set, the album collection, Volume 1, 1973 to 1984. For my money, the best of the Springsteen is right here. The uh, best of Bruce Springsteen is right here, not the Springsteen. The best of the Springsteen collection is right here. It's funny how they do this. So you've got a box that opens up this way. And then I did want to showcase this because I think it's kind of neat. For those of you who like Bruce Springsteen, first of all, why get this? I own all these CDs. Well... The reason to get them, and I also own the greatest hits, is because they've been remastered. And the, the process they use to remaster these, apparently, from what I've read, is amazing. And makes it far, sound far better so the instruments all sound separated, particularly if you have a nice 5.1 surround system, or just a nice stereo system in general, which I do. Or you have uh, headphones, which I have. And I also put this onto the iCloud so it's on all my devices. But So first you get, and each one of these look exactly like the albums. When I say exactly, I mean... Lyrics on the back, just like the album had. This folds out like the album did. Of course, the CD hasn't done that. And then the album had a lot of stuff like this on it, so you get all that. Now, reading this might be a challenge, but it's, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is that it's exactly a replica of 
my eyes are getting to the point where I can barely read the lyrics on the back, although I can, but, you know, it's not as easy as it once was uh, to read them. So, but that's Greeting from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Great album. Uh, Blinded by the Light would be the hit that would be on there that you probably would recognize. Um, if you're a Springsteen fan, then you recognize it a lot more, like Growing Up and Lost in the Flood and For You and Saint in the City. Uh, I'm sorry, not Saint in the City. It's hard to be a Saint in the City and Spirit in the Night. Next is the jazzy Springsteen album, which I absolutely love. The Wild, The Innocent, and The East Street Shuffle. I'm not going to go through all these, but this has got things on it like uh, Sandy, Fourth of July, Asbury Park, Kitty's Back, uh, The East Street Shuffle, and one of my favorites, New York City Serenade. But there's a lot of good stuff on this. Next, uh, my favorite Bruce Springsteen album, which is Born to Run, which is you know, traditional, I suppose and stuff like this and then it has the lyrics inside just like the album did so uh, I had this album back in the day when I had vinyl sometimes I regret not having it anymore but uh, like my kids said I'm surprised you don't own this one on vinyl just to have the big cover maybe to put it on the wall someplace and maybe I should can't be bored to run I've listened to these they sound incredible I can't say I've listened all the way through to all of them but I've listened to each one enough to you know a song or two to realize that each one is amazing. My second favorite Springsteen album, and one I waited forever for when it came out, is Bruce Springsteen's Darkness on the Edge of Town. I was just a kid when this came out, but loved it. I remember riding my bike to get it. Um, came out in 78, I think it was, 77 or 78. Rode my bike up to the local place to pick it up and was so excited that uh, you know that I, that I got it. It's got a lyric sheet in it as well, Darkness on the Edge of Town. Love it. Probably the best job, uh, the, the, the album that needed to be remastered the most out of this whole set, and it's another favorite of mine, is The River, a two-disc set. A lot of great songs on this, like The Ties That Bind, The River, uh, Out in the Street, Two Hearts, uh, I'm a Rocker, Point Blank, Cadillac Ranch, Wreck on the Highway, Drive All Night. There's just a ton of great songs on this if you're a Springsteen fan. And Nebraska, the acoustic record he, that he they came out with without the uh, E Street Band. Got Nebraska, Atlantic City, one of my favorites, Johnny 99. Uh, yeah. State Troopers, a great one. Highway Patrolman's a great one. Uh, my uh, Reason to Believe's a great one. A lot of great songs on this. And this sounds amazing, too. You wouldn't think an acoustic album could be remastered and sound that good, but good luck reading these. These lyrics are even tinier. Again, it's the idea that it matches the album, not that you can actually read it all. But I like I like the whole idea of it. And then finally, last but uh, not least, the most popular album he put out, as far as sales are concerned. I can't remember how many hits were on this thing. There's a ton of them. Born in the USA, kind of uh, certainly an iconic cover there with Springsteen's butt. Uh, Born in the USA, Cover Me, Darlington County, Downbound Train, I'm on Fire, Bobby Jean. Dancing in the Dark, My Hometown. I'm going down. Quite a few great uh, songs on this. Uh, one of my least favorite Springsteen albums. Maybe because it got overplayed. I don't know. But uh, one of my least favorite Springsteen albums. Still, good album. But I'm not going to say it's a bad album. Oh, Glory Days is on this too. Did I leave off Glory Days? Glory Days, another big hit. Um, but I, my, I'm, I tend to be more into the operatic type of rock and roll. Um or more, at least more epic, like Born to Run. More, more of the romantic rock, I guess. For me, Born to Run is, is it, and then Darkness second, and, and River third. Probably The Wild the Innocent fourth, then maybe Greetings, something like that. Then Nebraska, and then finally, off this set, for sure, that's in last place for me. And it's even it's, it goes down even further than that for me on my list of Springsteen albums. But you know what? It's still enjoyable, and I still do enjoy it. It's not a bad album by any means. I would never say that. Just my personal taste, and it's my wife's favorite, so you know, just taste. I'm not right. She's not right. I won't tell her that. But and then it comes with a really cool book. Um, I don't know how many pages that is, but it's thick. And it's in really nice shape. It has a little bit of a thing here. I think I put that there. Yeah, it's gone now. Um, I don't know if this is even look, looked at. It looks like nobody looked at it to me. Uh, looks like I think somebody probably put it on iTunes and, and then sold it in. 
I had to guess, but it's just a ton of pictures in here and a ton of articles. I can't read most of the stuff in here. It's just, the print's just big enough where you can read it. Even some of the newspaper articles I can make out. Mostly it's pictures though, which is which is great. Yeah. So, for most of you, it's probably a eh. For me, we're a Bruce Springsteen fan. These these are must-haves. So much better sounding than their counterparts. Finally. The first seven albums of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band uh, remastered in a, in a way that, that makes sense and you can finally hear things you should have been able to hear all along that you couldn't that were muddied in the mix. So really happy to pick that up. There's some tape on it because they sent it to me with tape on it. I don't care. It, it's still, it's nice. <clears throat> and then this stupid book is going to annoy the shit out of me. I keep bumping it. Okay, the last item, last but not least, just came today in a box. I'm 90% sure I know what this is because I think it's from Zavi, and I'm pretty sure I only have one thing left. Yes, this is it. I've seen this before. It's a steel book, so I always like to take a good, hard look at the... Make sure there's no dents, and it doesn't appear to be any dents. Yay. Um, well, what a great film this should be. Uh, I've only seen this once in my life years ago. Alfred Hitchcock. And Alfred Hitchcock's Steelbook. Say no more. I don't own this movie. In, uh, we've got all sorts of Alfred Hitchcock coll collections, but this has not been on any of them as far as I know. I, I've looked for it. Tulula Bankhead, William Bendix. I love both of those two, uh, that actor and actress. Uh, but you've got a, you've got a great uh, Hume Cronin. You've got a great cast here. I don't know all the names, but I know I know them to see them. There are a lot of great character actors here. Uh, it's 98 minutes in length, 1.37 to 1, which is the original aspect ratio. This contains the a Blu-ray and a DVD, 1080p, a Blu-ray encode job. And I'm talking about the steelbook of Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. Love the look of this. Just you know, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I just love the look of this. It it. The sea is represented well. You see the drawing there of the lifeboat. Yeah. I even like this on it. It just has that old poster type look to me. I haven't opened it yet, obviously. Um, but I will. And do I have something to open this with now? I gotta say, I don't own I don't own anything that I well like, sometimes I don't open it until I'm ready to watch it, just because there's no point. But with steel books, I usually like to open them up first of all to make sure they're not dented. I don't have, I think I've got one steel book that I don't have opened yet. And the reason for that is because I, it's all clear plastic. I could tell it was okay. And I had a second copy of it, which I did on a cell. Okay, it looks really nice. This is a matte finish on this, which I do enjoy. A ton of extras on this, uh, in addition to be the dual, dual format. It's got a, a new high definition 1080p transfer. It's got the Little Scene 1944 wartime film Bon, bon Voyage. It's 26 minutes long. And Aventure Mal, Malgache. Malgache. 32 minutes long. Originally licensed from the British Film Institute. Optional English subtitles in all three films. Uh, that being Lifeboat, Bon Voyage, and Aventure Malgache. 20-minute uh, documentary on the making of Lifeboat, a 12-minute excerpt from the legendary 1962 audio interviews between Francois Truffaut and Hitchcock. Oh, I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, discussing both Lifeboat and the wartime shorts. And then a 36-page booklet featuring new and exclusive essays in all three films by various critics. So, let's see here. What is this under the J card? Is there anything that's interesting? Or is it just black? Oh, no, it's interesting. Well, not that interesting. It's mainly black. I thought it, it looked interesting from this point, and then I thought it was black the rest of the way, so nothing nothing too fancy. Uh, let me just peel this J card off here carefully so I can open up the disc and take a look inside. Let's see about this 36-page booklet. Oh, nice. Uh, you may have seen, I don't know, you may have seen this on somebody else's channel. It seems like somebody I know... Uh, showcase it. I just can't remember who it was anymore. Yeah, the, the matte finish on this and the disc the disc is really nice. There's no dents or dings or anything in it, which is cool. Once I drop while I'm doing this. And I've done that before, believe it or not. Uh, so the, the uh, 
this or this type. You've seen these plastic things before. This is the Blu-ray. Looks cool. It's got similar artwork. I think it's the same artwork from the front cover. Yeah. And the uh, the DVD looks very similar to that. In fact, it's identical to that, I think. And then also you have the artwork behind it. So I like that. You know, collectors, right? And I think I paid like 20 bucks for this, which I thought was really good. Considering it's a limited edition steelbook, I'm not sure how many are left, but everything's limited edition these days. So oh, this is from the Masters of Cinema series, by the way, which I do respect what they do with their stuff. Um, yeah, it looks like a short, just a little shorter booklet uh, in height than some I've seen. Not that I care too much about that, but there you go. There's some of the characters that are in it. Tallulah Bankhead was the big star. But William Bendix, to me, was a star. That's William Bendix up there in the corner. He played Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth story, if you ever saw that movie. And that's where I, I think that's where I first saw him. I really liked him. And he's been in other stuff, too, as a character actor. This is based on a novella by John Steinbeck, who was one of my favorite authors. Some of you may recall, I mentioned it along the way here a few times, I used to teach high school English when I first got out of college. Uh, Steinbeck, you know, Grapes of Wrath, just one of my favorite uh, authors. And, uh, yeah. Never read Lifeboat, though. <laughs> I say that, but I have never read Lifeboat. I probably should read Lifeboat after I watch this movie. I know the plot, but I've never watched it. And I've never seen it. So, uh, showing the lifeboat is an article in here again. You got some great pictures from the from the movie. Uh, basically, this is a they're on a ship. It's during the war. The, uh, the 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 ship gets sunk, and then they're on the lifeboat. You know, I think that's no big surprise, right? And then while they're on the lifeboat, they have to uh, try to figure out how they're going to survive with no water and no food and all that good stuff. Not, not the whole movie takes place on the lifeboat, but a lot of it does. Yeah. This is a nice book. Beautiful pictures. Uh, let's flip through it real quick like this to get an idea. Beautiful black and white stills from the, all three films. And then uh, nice articles. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock's presentation of Lifeboat by John Steinbeck. Really nice. It's the back. Really nice, too. So, I look forward to adding that to the collection. And I will watch this probably next weekend. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's a look at the cover without the... Uh, there's the spine. I'll put this in, a, in plastic soon. Uh, for right now, I guess I'll throw the J-card back over it. Some level of protection for the back. Yeah. For the moment, anyway. 20th Century Pictures says down here in the corner. Really like the look of that. So, anyway... Lifeboat is part of the pickup. And, of course, you saw the head of Pennywise earlier. Then there was the uh, seven album, eight CD since uh, The Rivers 2, Bruce Springsteen collection. Probably my most exciting thing I picked up in a long time, actually, to be honest. It, I really love it. Halloween. Uh, Curse of Michael Myers, the unrated producer's cut. Baron Blood with Joseph Cotton. And Elky Summer, I believe. Elky Summer? Pretty sure that's Elky Summer. Yeah, Elky Summer is in that. And Life Force, which I did watch the other day and really liked. I'll watch it again. It's 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 a really rewatchable re movie for me. It's one of those horror movies I can watch again. Uh, I'm not sure how scary it was, but it was pretty cool. And I will watch all these again. I watched all four of these within the last week or so. Um... And I will watch these again, all of them, especially Christine, which I really love. But even even the Seventh Sign, I enjoyed with Demi Moore, or Demi Moore. I know uh, she she wasn't highly reviewed in this movie. This movie wasn't highly reviewed, but I liked it. So go figure. In fact, I liked it as well as the Blob, and I know a lot of people like the Blob, and I like this one as much as the Blob for different reasons. I thought the Blob was really well done, though. You know, it was really really cool. I liked it better than the Steve McQueen version. That might be sacrilege, but I did. And then we had a couple CDs early on. Of course, the uh, Strange Symmetry, which I picked up for like five bucks from the uh, from the artist herself. And then finally, last but not least, is Rattle That Lock 
from David Gilmore. Again, if you like Pink Floyd, you'd probably like this album. I like it better than the... I've heard the last Pink Floyd album they came out with, with Roger Waters, that they did like a year or so ago. But it was really mellow. Almost all instrumentals, really mellow. This one's got quite a few that have songs. They have lyrics, I mean. And uh, still re maintains that Pink Floyd sound. So, recommend that. That's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this update. And uh, it might be a little while for another. I have another one. I do have two more things coming from, uh, not Zabby, but from Arrow. And uh, I look forward to uh, to showcasing those when I get them. And I think I'm going to do, since this book keeps bugging me, I think I'm going to do something about all my books that I have that are related to movies or or uh, entertainment in some way. I've got comic movies. I'll have to, uh, comic book uh, hardcovers. I'll have to see what I want to do with it, but quite a few books I like might want to showcase those and so let me know if you think you might want to see those I think they're kind of interesting I bought them obviously for a reason and um, some of them I got for really good deals I can show you tell you where I got them from in some cases Amazon in some cases like Ollie's if you have an Ollie's uh, you might be able to pick it up real cheap anyway guys that's it for now hopefully you enjoyed this uh, lengthy update but I had a lot to say on some of them so hopefully you enjoyed it alright take care <laughs>